Could you live beside someone like this? After spending years being the most obnoxious neighbor she possibly could, through multiple lawsuits and arrests, this lady, commonly known as Mrs. Noisy, became a household name in Japan. Countless memes, and even a movie were made about her. But is there another side to this story? What could possibly cause someone to act this way? The truth was hidden down an incredibly deep rabbit hole. One small asterisk before we begin. This topic is extremely controversial on the Japanese internet. It's rife with misinformation, and it can be very difficult to determine what's true and what's not. To start, I'll cover the mainstream narrative of events. Then I'll present the alternative theories and counter narratives. This is Kawahara Miyoko. She rose to infamy in 2005 after CCTV footage of her terrorizing her neighbors was shown as headline news all over the country. Soon Obasan, or in English, Mrs. Noisy, would victimize her neighbors in Heguricho, which is a suburb of Nara, by doing the following beat her futon from her balcony every day while screaming insults at her neighborhood. Sometimes from 6 a.m. Park her car in front of the victim's house and honk the horn. Kick the victim's entryway gate. Constantly ring their doorbell. And worst of all, place multiple alarm clocks and a radio cassette player in an open window at the closest possible point to the victim's house, just meters away, and blast R&B and hip-hop music 24 hours of the day, every day, for years. She started blasting music in 1996 and never stopped. It was on 24 hours of the day. She was taken to civil court over it in 1999 and lost, paying a 600,000 yen fine, around 5,000 USD. This didn't stop her though. In 2000, the victimized family, who are not named publicly, but I'll refer to as the Sato family, installed a security camera which was able to capture footage of Mrs. Kawahara kicking and causing damage to their house's gate. This was enough evidence for a serious arrest. Kawahara was imprisoned for 46 days and fined 100,000 yen. This was the only time that the music stopped. After her release, she came back for revenge, continuing to play music and being a nuisance for five more years. She was finally arrested again in April of 2005. At her trial, the court recognized a specific period of 18 months where they had records of the noise she was making. Evidence showed sound readings taken around 5 a.m. from one meter away from her window, recorded as loud as 79 decibels, approximately equal to an alarm clock. In court, Mrs. Kawahara represented herself, appearing in a big pink sweater with a picture of a dog on it and pink socks. When a video of herself whacking her futon to her classic rhythm was played in the courtroom, she started grooving along to the beat. Because of significant suffering experienced by the Sato family as a result of Mrs. Kawahara's actions, including insomnia, headaches, and vertigo, she was eventually sentenced to one year and eight months in prison and forced to pay 2 million yen in damages. After the footage recorded by the Sato family's CCTV cameras was released to the media, it became mainstream headline news and went viral online too. Furthermore, when reporters would go to Heguricho to see what was going on, Kawahara would scream and berate them. Kawahara Miyoko became a household name, and not in a good way. Her chant of Hikoshi, Hikoshi, Sasa to Hikoshi became a meme. Here are some references to her in popular media. Countless remixes were made of her too. People still call her DJ Miyoko and compliment her taste in R&B and hip-hop all over the internet to this day. 
Also, in 2019, a movie came out based on the events that happened back then. It follows a dispute between neighbors over noise from whacking a futon that ends up involving the media, apparently. I haven't been able to find it online, but if you've seen it, please tell us about it in the comments. So, what could have caused such bad blood between neighbors? Sources disagree as to the true origin, but it could be a combination of any of the following. The first is that, according to the Sato family, Mrs. Kawahara was upset about a lamp they placed in their garden. Another source says that the feud started when Mrs. Kawahara started hanging her futons or carpets on her balcony and whacking them to clean them at 6 a.m. This news report claims that it started when the Sato family's children hit Mrs. Kawahara's vehicle with a ball while playing catch. Also, Mrs. Kawahara has a tendency to sue her neighbors. We'll get into it later, but in her trial where she was sentenced to prison, she was asked multiple times whether or not she will finally stop suing her neighbors. Mrs. Kawahara claims that she was also partially victimized, however. While under oath, she stated that people from her town would bully her, including cutting her barbed wire fences, breaking her flower pots, and having people glue her shutter's keyhole shut. Additionally, she claims she has had rocks thrown at her, had people deface her house's nameplate, and had her door broken by a brick in 2004. She says this led her to fight alone versus the rest of the neighborhood. Even in some testimony provided by Mrs. Sato, she admits that at one point a large group of people were outside of Kawahara's house heckling her. As all of this was playing out in the public eye, alternative theories started popping up on image boards in Japan. Websites like 2Channel have managed to popularize the theory that it is actually in fact Mrs. Kawahara, their beloved DJ Miyoko, who was the victim, and that the supposed victimized Sato family were actually the harassers. How could that be? Well, the theory goes that after moving into the neighborhood, Mrs. Kawahara was quickly invited by her neighbors to join a certain religious organization. After rejecting them, she started to face constant harassment. The organization, along with all of her neighbors and the mass media, spun a web of lies to destroy her character. They started attacking her and her family, framing her for things like graffiti and destruction of property, spying on her, bringing mobs of people to her house to protest her, and much more. The theory also states that Mrs. Kawahara's entire family was afflicted with a horrible disease and needed constant care. Remember that last one, it'll come up again later. As I said, this theory is incredibly prevalent online. However, I found no evidence that there is, or ever was, a branch of that religion in Hegericho, or that they have any significant following in the area. Furthermore, at the top of the Niko Nikopedia for this theory, it gives a big warning in red text before you even start reading the article. The only sources for this theory are 2Channel and sites that source content from it. It's just a hypothetical theory. Sometimes, sources other than 2Channel are referenced, like the magazine Shukan Shincho, here, they are referring to this specific article from their June 2005 edition. In fact, verifiable sources on this subject are extremely scarce nowadays. Almost all of the citations on the Wikipedia page refer to paper publications from around 2005 that are not available online. But I wanted to find out what actually happened. I bought the relevant sources online, waited for them to arrive, and managed to procure the following information. By the way, all the documents refer to Mrs. Kawahara as Miyoko, her first name, so I'll be calling her that too. In 2005, Miyoko's sister was interviewed when her grandchildren were being bullied because of Miyoko's reputation. She said, The Miyoko I've seen on TV, I've never seen her like that before, and that Miyoko is honestly a nice person. Apparently in the early stages of Miyoko and Mrs. Sato's relationship, they would spend quality time together, going to get tea or pumping nice water from the springs together. Early on, Miyoko was at war with a different family in the neighborhood who threw rocks at her car. Apparently, it led to fist fights in the streets. Miyoko sued that family, won in court, and they ended up moving away. It was fine for a while, but eventually, conflict started with the Sato family. So, how did the conflict actually begin? Miyoko briefly mentioned to her sister Mrs. Sato complaining about the noise she was making when washing dishes, but the main problem was the garden light, apparently. It quickly escalated after that. Mrs. Sato says, It started with prank calls. On some days, over 75 times, Miyoko would call me and not say anything. Just a little note, silent phone calls are considered threatening in Japan. Constant graffiti on the walls, honking her car horn for over 30 minutes, throwing firecrackers at their house, and having all kinds of disgusting insults yelled at them. Sato says, I'll never forget September 7th, 1996. This is the day that the 24-7, 365 days a year music started. She kept memos, quote, I have 22 diaries of this. I installed three security cameras and have over a hundred tapes. I even installed double pane windows to help block the sound. And as a result, I've probably spent near 10 million yen on countermeasures, approximately 90,000 US dollars. 
In August 2004, through a civil suit, they received an injunction to stop Miyoko's behavior. They managed to get four provisions that Miyoko was supposed to abide by. Do not play music through a speaker facing their house between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. Do not say things that defame their character. Do not recklessly honk your horn. Do not ring their doorbell if you have no business with them. Not only did Miyoko completely break these provisions, she bought three security cameras of her own and surrounded her house with barbed wire to fortify it, she said. When the police came for her, they needed four or five people to breach her house. She went crazy, causing one of them to need three stitches in their arm. But why did Miyoko care so much about the light in the first place? According to Mrs. Sato, one of their first fights was when Miyoko came to her house and said, You know my husband has bad legs. Your light makes my husband dizzy. What will you do if it makes him fall? I'll sue you. This isn't something Miyoko just made up either. Here's another quote from Mrs. Sato. Seeing her husband go up their wooden steps on all fours, it broke my heart. I visited her daughter in the hospital. But the time we lost as well will never come back. That's what hurts. So Miyoko has children? And they're in the hospital? Why is her husband crawling up the stairs? Well, there's something very important about Miyoko's family that you should know. Kawahara Miyoko was born in 1947 in Toyama. After graduating high school, she soon after moved into a house in Osaka. At age 21, she got married to a man who was also from Toyama. Just a note, lots of sources say it was an arranged marriage, but this article specified it was not arranged. She was, however, pregnant when they got married. They had three kids together, two daughters and then a son. They bought a house together in East Osaka, and things were looking good. Until one day, when her eldest daughter, in her early teenage years, started having seizures and became bedridden. She was diagnosed with a disease called SCA, a degenerate inherited condition which affects approximately 30,000 people in Japan. Here's what Miyoko's relatives had to say about it. The disease starts by inhibiting your ability to walk. Then it progresses, affecting your ability to use your arms and legs. It takes your ability to talk. Eventually, you stop being able to eat and even breathe as you get weaker every day. Show me a mother that can remain calm while their beloved child gets weaker and weaker, closer to the grave with each passing day. It must have been tough, but Miyoko took care of her. That wasn't the end of the bad news, though. The disease was genetic. Her husband had it, and he passed it down to their children. Worse, him, the other daughter, and their son started to all succumb to it as well. From an interview with Miyoko's husband's mother, my husband would apologize to Miyoko every time he saw her. He passed it to his son through his ex-wife. But Miyoko never complained. She took excellent care of her entire family through their difficult times. Eventually, both daughters died three years apart. Her husband and son lived on, but required permanent care. In her first trial, she was represented by a lawyer. But after that, she represented herself in court each time. Even though she was busy with the care of her family, she went to the courthouse alone and learned how to prepare all the documents and evidence forms. She filled out three cardboard boxes worth of documents while laying with her daughters on their deathbed. Miyoko's sister says that Miyoko insists she was set up from the start. Regarding the destruction of the gate, Miyoko wrote an affidavit for the court. Would a strong gate made of iron really be broken by such a small impact? Please, try kicking or shaking my gate. I promise I won't sue you. Miyoko was wearing sandals at the time, and her legs did not sustain any injuries from the kick. She claims the Sato family broke their own door. Regarding the case of the graffiti on the wall, Miyoko's affidavit insists she was framed there too. Miyoko saw Mrs. Sato bent over doing something strange to the wall from her second floor window. Sato was moving quickly, so she couldn't exactly see what. Miyoko went down to check, and Sato immediately started yelling, Look what you've done, trying to frame her. Miyoko saw the red lines on the wall and was shocked. According to less credible websites, when this graffiti-related framing was brought up in court and Mrs. Sato was made to explain what happened, she said she was too tired, refused to answer, fainted, and left the courtroom. Miyoko is honestly a nice person, her sister writes, but it's in her nature to respond to a challenge. She couldn't stand being framed like this. Even Miyoko herself is aware how absurd her feud with her neighbors is. I am a wolf, she wrote. I fight my fight alone. I haven't consulted anyone about this. It's my responsibility. I don't want to involve anyone else in this stupid quarrel. When reporters talk about this case, they often ask, what could have caused Miyoko to act like this? To them, Miyoko replied, it's not some sort of selfish, purposeless noise. It's my cries, my screams. 
Mrs. Sato was quoted right after she saw Miyoko come out of jail into the courtroom. When I saw Mrs. Kawahara in court, she looked so thin. I felt bad for her. But honestly, it's for the best. It's so quiet without her. I can listen to Teresa Tang or Masashi Sada's From the North Country, whatever songs I want now. Honestly, I don't want her to come back. I just want to keep on living in quiet like this. Kawahara Miyoko was released from prison in 2007 after three months plus 17 months time served. Nobody has heard from her since, but the city of Hegudicho's reputation was severely damaged by the events. They had to implement a new law trying to restore order in their city, which among other things restricts the noise levels of households to 65 decibels in the day and 60 decibels at night. A very convoluted story. Who do you think was in the right? Any theories? Also, tell me about your worst neighbors. I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry about the delay, it took longer than I expected because it involved the most in-depth research I've ever done for a video. It was very hard tracking down the sources I had to buy, and even harder figuring out which ones were credible. If you like my videos, I've opened up a Patreon today, and I would really appreciate anyone who'd like to subscribe to it. It means a lot to me. It takes a long time to make these videos, and your contributions help me work towards the goal of being a full-time YouTuber. If that's not your cup of tea, please consider subscribing to the channel if it's the kind of content you're interested in. Big thanks to Azuma Hibiki in my Discord for starting me on this research two months ago, Emma City and their friend for receiving a document to me, and most importantly, the owner of Roots Hostel in Osaka for receiving and scanning five pages of documents for me. Oh yeah, one more weird thing about this case. Even though multiple other sources and news reports state that her daughters died before the trial, the court record for her case heavily implies that her daughters are alive. I'm not really sure what to make of that. Thanks for watching. Shit.